Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to get option chains from the CBOE website. So these are the options I will be scraping, but I'm going to include all expirations and all strikes. So I had to listen through the scripts that were loading onto this website to get the appropriate link to pull all the strikes and all the expirations. So I won't be showing you that step because I've covered that in previous videos. So let's go to our R script. Here are some of the packages we're going to require. This function called get EFS extracts the expirations, the flag, whether it's a put or a call, and the strike from the options name. And I'll go over that once we get into the other function, which is called CBOE underscore options. You will need to enter a stock symbol. And for exercise, you just need to insert whether it's an American or a European type option. So if you want to get index options, you have to use their naming convention, which is just simply an underscore followed by the index. Otherwise, just use the regular stock symbol for any other stock. So this is the URL. I'm going to read that URL using read underscore JSON, convert it as a data frame, and then I'll use get EFS to extract the expiration, the flag, and the strike from the options name. I'm going to combine those variables and attach it to my options data. And then the very last line, I'm just correcting the timestamp to get it in the appropriate format. So we'll run through an example. But first, I have to run this function called get EFS. For symbol, I'll pass in Apple. And for exercise, we'll do American. So we'll run a couple of lines. We'll take a look at the raw options data. So this is what the data looks like, except that we don't have any information regarding the strike, whether it's a call or a put, or the expiration. So that's where the get EFS function comes in handy. I'm going to split this string basically. So if we take a look at the first line in that function. To get to the expiration date, I'm going to subset the string and then you'll see a bunch of numbers. All that means is I'm passing in that string and the first number is where it should start and the last number is when it should end. So here I'm starting at negative 15 and stopping at negative 10. So if we count backwards, negative 15 starts here and negative 10 should stop there. So this becomes my expiration date. And then I'll repeat the process to extract the call or the put. And then the remainder just becomes the strike. And notice I'm starting backwards. The reason for that is that tickers are usually variable in length. So starting from the beginning of the string makes it a little bit harder. So that's what that function is doing. So if we pass that in and then combine it with our options data, We'll take a look at our options and now we get an expiration column a flag column and the strike column so the next thing i'll do is correct this timestamp to get it in the appropriate format i'm going to add a column with the last underlying price of the stock i'm also going to add a column with today's date so that i could reference when this data was actually pulled i'm going to add another column for the days until expiration I'm also going to add the mid price, which is just the bid plus the ask divided by two. Now this part is actually optional because if we take a look at our options, we see that they actually do include some Greeks, but I would recommend that you actually calculate the Greeks. So the first thing we pass in is whether this is a European or an American style option. So this step will actually calculate a column for the implied volatility, which we will later need to calculate all the Greeks. So this will be for the European style options and this will be for the American style options. After we get all the implied volatilities, I'll add it as a column and then I'll separate the calls and the puts to calculate the Greeks. So after we calculate the Greeks, we'll combine it with the calls and the puts. After that's been calculated, I'll combine the puts with the calls. I'll then go ahead and add a column for the ticker name and then finally just return the options. So I'll go ahead and run this and then I'll show you guys what that table actually looks like. All right guys, so this is our options table. We now have 40 columns and you'll see that after the strike, there's a column for the underlying stock price, the date it was pulled, the number of days until expiration. This is the mid quote price for that option, our calculated implied volatility, the symbol name, and then the last eight columns are just the Greeks that we actually calculated. 
All right, guys, so that concludes this video. I hope this was informative and useful. I'm going to post this script on GitHub, and I'll leave the link down below. Let me know if you have any questions, and as always, thanks for watching.